So once every two weeks, roughly, this is what I do. I inject intramuscular, shallow intramuscular. Um, I use testosterone enanthate. I use 0.25 mil twice weekly, which is 120 milligrams a week. So to draw the enanthate out of the ampule, which I got here, I got a one mil ampule. I'm using a one mil reduced dead space syringe. So this is basically gonna reduce the amount of testosterone that I lose when I'm withdrawing. I'm using an 18 gauge needle because the bigger the gauge, the easier it's gonna be to withdraw the testosterone. So the gauge basically means how thick the needle is. It's gonna be a wider circumference for the oil to come through. As you can see, it's coming through quite good there. I mean, you haven't got a rush. You've got to take your time because if you do rush, you will just end up pulling air bubbles out. Any type of testosterone gets carried with oil. So you really have got to be patient. I mean, the bigger the gauge, the better. I mean, it's not like HCG where you're just pulling out water. This does take a bit of time. Sometimes people warm the oil up. I mean, years and years ago when I used to be on cycles, I used to just chuck it in a warm bath or in a sink and warm it up because then it'd make it a lot easier to withdraw especially in winter when the oil gets really thick. I mean, obviously with oil, the hotter it is, the more, the more playable it becomes. So I've got my one mil of testosterone amphite there in my syringe, ready to go. Now I'm just getting out my four syringes, which I'm gonna backload. These syringes are insulin syringes. They're 30 gauge and they're half inch. So these for me, they do go into the muscle. They do go, I am intramuscular. And I know they go into my muscle because I get that numb feeling. When you do, when you just go into subcutaneous fat, you don't get a numb feeling. You don't get any feeling whatsoever. You might get a sharp bit of pain from the carrier oil sometimes, uh, but that's it. So you know if you're going for the muscle because it goes a bit numb. That numbness is slightly dull and it, and it goes after five minutes. I mean, sometimes you don't get any feeling whatsoever. That is the reason I love using insulin syringes. It reduces pip. I don't get any pip whatsoever. Post-injection pain is non-existent. Like I said, you might get that numbness feeling, but that is it. I mean, it's half inch long, so it doesn't go right into the muscle. And it's 30 gauge, so it's so thin. I mean, it doesn't really affect your body at all. You get hardly any scar tissue whatsoever. I, it, it's beyond me why anyone uses anything bigger. I mean, 29 gauge, fine. That's insulin as well. But why use anything bigger these days? It's just you're causing scar tissue. You're more likely to hit something inside your body. I mean, it just makes sense to use these. Now, I said I was back loading, so what that means is basically you plug the plunger right at the back, you pull it straight out, and you back load into the back end. Obviously, the front end is where the pin is. This is going to be the back end. Look. So I pull the plunger out, and I'm putting 0.25 mil in each of my syringes because that adds up to the 1 mil. Look. Between the 1 mil, that makes four syringes of 0.25 mil. I'm going to be injecting one of these straight away on video, so I'll show you what I do there as well. But the other three, I'll just chuck in my drawer and they'll be fine to go. They'll be good to go. There's no problem whatsoever storing them in a the drawer and, or storing them in the syringe like this. It's completely fine. That's what happens when you get ampules. If I'm being completely honest, I'd rather have one of the 10 mil bottles and just pull out whatever I wanted at the time. But I can't. Unfortunately, they come in these little one mil ampules and I've got to make do. I mean, it's not a problem. It's a bit more hassle, but it is what it is. This is partly the reason why I only inject twice a week. I mean, number one, my memory is absolutely terrible. I can't remember to inject more than twice a week. Twice a week is bad enough. Number two, if I had the 10 mil bottle, I would just go up to the bottle and withdraw whatever I wanted for that day. And that'd be it. Bish, bash, bosh. But I, I just fly through syringes. I'd have to keep making these all the time. It'd just do my head right in. Here, I'm just getting anything that's left at the bottom of the bottle at the bottom of the ampule and um, putting it in my last little bit really you don't want any wastage and this actually makes it up to 0.25 anyway so any wastage at the bottom get it out get it inside you paying all that money for a testosterone I ain't wasting a penny get it inside you now here admittedly you should be just chucking your syringe straight into a sharp spin but I just put the plastic straight back on the top, the cap back on the top. I've never had a problem like stabbing myself and I just think you're stupid. If you if you can stab yourself with a knee, that's pretty stupid. I mean, accidents happen, don't they? But I've never done it. So where I'm gonna be plugging my syringe back in, look. Now you don't wanna push it all the way in straight away. Just literally get the bottom in, tap the top 
wait for the air bubbles to rise to the top and let the testosterone start dripping down to the bottom. I've got another syringe here so I can show you again. Literally just plug the bottom in like that so any oil can get out and just let it start dripping to the bottom. Give it a little bit of motivation, give it a little flick and you can see it look, start dribbling down. Once it starts dribbling down, that air bubble's at the top, you can push the plug proper back in then. If you start ramming it in, the testosterone is just going to fly at the top and I have been impatient sometimes and it there's no getting around it. It, it just if you're if you're going to be impatient you're going to lose testosterone it's just going to go everywhere the key to this really is being patient i mean i've been pissed and done this uh drunk off me head um i've been rushing and every time i do do that i end up wasting so much testosterone as a joke just thing is if your syringes are bang on the measurements which they should be and you start losing a load at the top then that's going to affect your hormones you're not getting the correct dosage and you're not going to have the correct testosterone inside your body. So really, your testosterone replacement therapy is not what it should be. So you don't want to waste anything. You want to be on the correct amount and you don't be wasting anything. Now I've backloaded all my syringes, I'm ready for one of my injections. So this is an alcohol swab. Sometimes I didn't use alcohol swabs. You should always use an alcohol swab because you don't know what kind of germs or anything or what dirt ever you've got on you. I've just finished work, so... Um, see that ball come out of nowhere that was my dog so you want to do it in a circular motion starting on the inside and working your way out you don't want to go back in because if you go back in you could possibly put in dirt back on you want to keep out out go out 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 because then you know it's constantly clean and you're just wiping the dirt away 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 so get your air bubble to the top give it a little flick get that air bubble out it doesn't matter if you've got a tiny little air bubble in there it's just a giant ones people worry about and then you see I had a little drop coming out at the top then? That's perfect. So then I go two thirds down my upper leg and I go about one, two o'clock. I've made a video on this before. I always aspirate because I've hit somewhat dodgy before on my leg. So I will always aspirate. And you should always aspirate because no matter how big the syringe or how small the syringe, you never know what's underneath your skin and you never know what's, you know, you could be hitting anything, a vein or an artery. I know they're down deep, but you never know. I don't want to risk it ever again. So yeah, I aspirate and I inject slowly. People say, oh, it can take ages uh, with insulin syringes. It doesn't, it literally takes, it doesn't even take me a minute to inject this. 0.25 mil, that's on, the, that's on the bigger end of an injection as well for TRT. And you can see, it takes no time at all. Pull it straight out again. I just put the plastic back on the top. And now the key to not having post-injection pain, PIP, is giving it a massage after. You give it a massage after, you're encouraging the oil to start moving about. Otherwise, it could possibly, where the injection site is, it could just, it could just be all built up there. Again, massaging it around takes no time at all, literally 10, 20, 30 seconds, and you're done.